All right, good afternoon. Uh, today's edition of History Hunger Games Corona Edition is brought to you by hand sanitizer and brought to you by toilet paper. All right, what are we talking about today? We are going to be talking about early Africa. But before I do that, one thing I want to show you is a few changes that have happened in the Blackboard course. So let me exit this for just a moment. First thing I want you to notice, PowerPoints and lectures. In each of the topics we're talking about today, once again, is African Islam. I'm going to put my PowerPoints and my lectures into the existing PowerPoint and lecture folder. So here's the PowerPoint that I made yesterday, and the link for this lecture will be put in here as well. Another change I want to show you has to do with the Museum Review Dropbox. Since most museums are closed right now, I'm not going to make you go to a museum. So I have a list of approved virtual museums you can visit. You just click on these, you look through the different exhibits and write a review on what you see. Alternatively, you can use these approved historical films. I think these are all very good films. The link that I have in here doesn't go to the movie itself. It goes to a trailer for the movie. That way you can decide which of the movies sounds interesting to you and then you can go and rent it, buy it, watch it wherever you choose. There's also a slight change with the SLO Dropbox. Uh, before I didn't have anything in there, I have added for you a link or a Dropbox for your rough drafts. Uh, depending on which class you're in, the due date may be a little bit different, but whatever it is, it's going to be due on a Sunday. Uh, check the course calendar for whatever the due date is. And when you submit this, I'll read it, I'll give you feedback, and I'll get you some help going towards your final draft. On syllabus, you'll notice that there is one change of syllabus, virtual office hours. When you click on that, it will bring you to a program called Discord. Discord can be downloaded on your phone. Discord can be downloaded to your computer, or it can just be run in a web browser. This is a place where we can talk, we can chat. If you have any questions, you can ask them here almost in real time. Also, there is a voice channel so we can talk if you need to. All right, let's get on with the short little lecture here. So we're gonna be talking once again about early Africa today. And first thing you gotta know, the true size of Africa. Africa is a lot bigger than you think. A lot of people think of Africa as a country, but it's actually a continent made up of many different countries. In Africa, it's 12 million square miles. It's big enough to put in United States, China, Europe, India, all those countries you see there can fit in it. Uh, Africa also has a lot of people, 1.2 billion people. That is a lot. So don't think of Africa as being a, a deserted, it's not abandoned, it's not a country. Africa is very, very big. All right, a quick reminder from one of our very first lectures. Early human ev evolution, if you have forgotten, there's this theory called the out of Africa theory from anthropologists. It's believed scientifically that our earliest ancestors came from the savannas of Eastern and Southern Africa, and they spread from there. And I've got a little video, not video, but a, an image here to kind of show you how that spread happens. These early humans were hunter gatherers and the agricultural revolution started approximately 10,000 years ago and it moves very slowly. Now, what were they growing? Something called millet something called sorghum, eventually bananas, sugarcane, and coconuts are brought to Africa from Southeast Asia and India. The next thing is ancient Egypt. This is another refresher. Ancient Egypt was part of Africa. Uh, the first settlements begin in ancient Egypt around 5200 BC along the Nile River. Um, it takes about 2,000 years and settlements go from the Mediterranean Sea down to the bottom part of the Nile. 
and this population growth leads to conflicts small cities turn into kingdoms and then those kingdoms are, are, are what we talked about with ancient egypt you got the old kingdom the middle kingdom the new kingdom you also have to remember ancient egypt they've got the temples they've got the the pyramids they've got that religion where i've listed all the different gods like thos and ra amun uh, all of those on the board and then last but not least the writing style for the ancient egyptians hieroglyphics and we talk about them before as well something that is new is ancient ethiopia uh, originally the place that we know of ethiopia today was called the kingdom of aksum and the kingdom of kush the upper nile is actually two different rivers it's the white nile and the blue nile and then they join together to become the bigger nile river uh, the kingdom of Aksum and the kingdom of Kush started along the Blue Nile, which is a little bit smaller. Uh, Aksum was a colony of a place called the kingdom of Saba. Uh, if you've heard of the queen of Sheba, the queen of Sheba was actually a queen of Saba. Uh, this is about 100 AD and the kingdom of Saba was located in modern day Saudi Arabia. Now, why is this important? It's one of the earliest places to convert to Christianity and it helped to spread Christianity and the people of Ethiopia become Christian in the 300s. The Sahara. First thing, don't say Sahara Desert because then you're just saying desert, desert, and that is redundant. Uh, so just say Sahara. The Sahara makes up most of North Africa and the Sahara is still spreading little by little. Uh, somewhere between 6,000 BC and 5,000 BC, for whatever reason, the continent of Africa started to dry out, and now it is the world's largest desert. Uh, one important part uh, of that, there are a couple of small kingdoms. There's the kingdom of Mali, the kingdom of Ghana, the kingdom of Benin, and then you also have the city of Carthage. The city of Carthage, which we talked about with the Romans, that becomes a focal point of tra trans-Saharan trade. A lot of trade routes go through the desert and they go to Carthage and then stuff is shipped from Carthage into Europe. Eastern and Southern Africa is a little bit different. Still grasslands, savannas, some, some forests, rainforests there. Uh, there are really two big groups that live in Eastern and Southern Africa. Uh, one is the Bantu group and one is the Khoisan group. The Bantu group, it's about 450 different Bantu languages or dialects. Uh, they are somewhat mutually understandable. So somebody from Kenya can sort of understand somebody from the Congo, but there are some differences. The best example I can think of in our modern world would be English speakers. While somebody from South Africa, New Zealand, Ireland, Scotland, they all speak English. The dialects are very different. And sometimes it's hard to understand somebody from those other places. Another example, if you are a Spanish speaker or if you've taken any Spanish, French, anything like that, the Romance languages, they are technically different languages, but there are some similarities. Somebody speaking Italian, somebody speaking French, if they speak slow, there is some understandability. If it's written, it's even more understandable, but it's very hard to do. Uh, today, there are over 350 million people that speak Bantu, and the word Bantu itself means people. Now, to me, one of the coolest things about the Bantu language is this idea of reduplication. Uh, what that means is if something is a multiple or a, a um, plural, if you will, they duplicate, they say the word again. Uh, for example, the word piga, P-I-G-A, means to strike. Piga, piga, means to strike repeatedly. The other big language group is called Khoisan. This is the click language. I've included a little YouTube video in the PowerPoint that you can click on, and you can hear them talking. Uh, there are about 500 million people who speak Khoisan, and the clicks actually serve as consonants within their words. Now, both Eastern and Southern Africa, they trade with the Indian subcontinent and they trade with the Arab world. 
So even though they're south of the Sahara Desert, and look, I just did it, I said desert, desert. Even those people who are south of the Sahara, they are connected with the rest of the world through the Arab trade and by trading with Southeast Asia. The Greeks, they knew all about Africa. Now remember, Hellenic world, that's talking ancient Sparta, ancient Athens. The Hellenistic world, that's talking Alexander the Great. Both of those periods of Greek history are related to Africa. There are many Greek stories that happen in Africa. One of the very famous stories is about the, the god Heracles going to fight the Titans. One of the Titans that Heracles fights is Atlas. And supposedly the pillars of Heracles are where the battle happened. The rock of Gibraltar and the mountain of Jebel Musa. Uh, that's right at the entrance of the Mediterranean from the Atlantic Ocean. And then also near there are called the Caves of Heracles. These are supposed to be bottomless caves where Heracles fought, or not fought, but he slept the night before he fought Atlas. There's also a very famous story about Andromeda. In the story of Andromeda, Andromeda is the daughter of a king and queen and it's believed that the queen slept with somebody and andromeda was the result of that that uh how do i say uh, that affair mainly because andromeda was a different color andromeda was white the king and the queen were black and that became a very big greek story there as well Andromeda ends up becoming uh, a symbol of beauty for both people in Africa and Greece. In the Hellenistic world, Egypt is conquered by Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great declares himself a Egyptian god and then falls in love with Egyptian culture, starts wearing Egyptian clothes. The city of Alexandria becomes the center of Greek culture. And then after Alexander dies, one of his main generals, a guy named Ptolemy Soter, steals Alexander's body and hides it in Egypt. Uh, the Greeks are also able to adopt the language of the Phoenicians, aka the phonetic alphabet. Now, how does that tie to Africa? The Phoenicians used to live in Egypt. The Phoenicians used to live in what is today Israel and the Phoenicians settled the city of Carthage. The Roman Empire and Africa, they're related as well. Remember, Rome and Carthage, Carthage were mortal enemies. You have the Punic Wars, Punic War I, Punic War II, Punic War III, Hannibal and the Elephant, Scipio Amelanus sailing across the Mediterranean and attacking Carthage from behind. Once North Africa is conquered, they are considered some of the most Roman provinces, and North Africa actually becomes the source of all the food for the city of Rome. So if you remember, Rome, they couldn't grow enough food. Rome had a sort of welfare. A lot of that food came from North Africa across the Mediterranean Sea and into the city of Rome. Africa is also a key element in the spread of Christianity. During the first century AD, the Apostle Mark goes to North Africa, goes to Ethiopia, goes to Egypt, and spreads Christianity. And there's this denomination or this version of Christianity that's formed there called Coptic Christianity. And the biggest difference between Coptic Christianity and mainstream Christianity is that a Coptic Christian thinks Jesus was human, then he died, and then he became divine, where most Christian denominations believe Jesus was human and divine at the same time, aka performing miracles while he was alive. Another big Christian figure from Africa was this guy named Augustine of Hippo. He becomes one of the most important Catholic church figures in the early church. Uh, he lives in the late 300s, early 400s, and he wrote two books. He wrote an autobiography called Confessions, where he explains how and why he became Catholic. 
And then he writes a book called City of God where he says that non-Christians are the reason that Rome was attacked in 410 AD. All right, that is your whirlwind tour of Africa in early history. Um, there's a lot more I could talk about, but I'm trying to keep this fairly short for you. Uh, there will be another video, of course, on Thursday talking about Islam and how Islam affects Africa. And as promised, a word of the day. Today's word of the day is going to be hand sanitizer. All right. We look forward to talking to you soon and have a good day. Stay safe.